GN. You just joined us. I talked about Dr. Ken Candido, an anesthesiologist in Chicago who is an anesthesiologist, but is also posting videos of him throwing footballs extraordinary distances, sometimes 20, 30, 40 yards, and swishing it into a basketball hoop. He's in our studio now. Doctor, welcome. Thank you, John. Thanks for having me. Privilege to be here. Those are all real videos? Every single one of them. When did you realize you could do that? You know, in about 2018, I was just out walking my dogs on my property. I have the privilege of having a, a court, full-size court almost, and I was just twirling a football, and I decided to throw it from the foul line. I made it, moved back to half court, <laughs> made it, and then I started to say, well, can I do this from further distances? So I did a little research. I saw what the world records were, at least according to Guinness. There's a 50-yard throw by so-called dude perfect people, and I said, I can emulate that. I can do that. I know I can do that, and that's when it all started. So were you able to throw it from 50 yards? I made the first longer throw of about 43, and I started to move back. My record, my personal record is 53 yards measured. But the stimulus, what really got me going, John, was when I met Joe Montana. How's that? So Joe and I were both speaking at a, a, a conference, a pain conference here locally in the city, right across the street, actually. And I had the pleasure of meeting Joe in one of the speaker ready rooms. And I said, hey, Joe, can I show you something? And <laughs> <laughs> Joe rolled his eyes. Yeah, yeah, right. Like showing Michael Jordan your jump shot, right, Joe? <laughs> and when I showed Joe the, one of the, my throws, 50-yard throw, Joe grabbed my shoulder, and he was not very happy. And he said, you know, a lot of guys can throw a football far, and they can throw it accurately. But you know what the difference is? And now a little bit of a spittle was coming out of the side of Joe's mouth, and Joe said, you cannot do that with a 300-pound lineman running at you six inches from your face. Well, there's that. And I agreed, and I, and I started to laugh, nervously laughing, and Joe sw flipped my ID badge around, and he said, oh, you're a doctor. He said, well, you know, I've had seven uh, cuff repairs on my throwing arm and three ACDF surgeries on my neck. He said, I can't even throw a ball five yards. Good job. But, you know, that served as a stimulus, that slight, that kind of the demeaning uh, affect that Joe relayed upon me. And I don't blame him. He's a Hall of Famer, four-time Super Bowl champion. But I went out and I started throwing in Joe's honor. I used to say... Apples, peaches, pears, banana. You can't do this, Joe Montana. And I sent it to Joe. He didn't like it much. I didn't think he would. And that's how it got started. And then, of course, with the global pandemic, I had a lot of free time, and I just stayed outside and threw, threw, threw. Did you play football in school? I played high school ball. Were you uh, a quarterback? I was a quarterback. So did you have a good arm back in the day then too, huh? Well, they called me Eddie LeBaron. Eddie LeBaron was a five-foot five-inch quarterback who played for Washington, and later he was the Dallas Texans and Dallas Cowboys' first quarterback. And my coach, who had been a, a Hall of Fame, uh, or I should say College Hall of Fame guard at Syracuse, he played for, with Jim Brown. He called me Eddie LeBaron in honor of that because I could always throw a ball. You got a nice toss, and I don't know how old you are in these videos or how old you are now, but you seem to be able to throw a football better and farther than I would imagine you should be able to. Thank you, John. I'm 66 years old. I started throwing when I was 62. Wow. And I anticipate if, if I can make 1,000 throws, it'll take me till about 68 years old. I'm making about a clip of about 250 to 300 a year now. What's your ratio of makes to misses? Ah, that's the magic formula. It's about, honestly, it's about 10%. And, and I go really? out. Yes, sir. And I go out and I set the goal at 30 throws. At 66 years old, my cuff isn't that great. I've had a biceps tendon repair. I'll tell Joe you said hi. <laughs> but if, if you went out in the backyard and threw 10, one of them you'd probably hit. That's correct. Not, from what distance? Well, I, I don't throw f now f from uh, closer than 40 yards. I'm about 45 yards most of my throws now. Most of your throws are 40 yards? Yes, sir. A, you can throw it 40 yards. You can throw 60. One in 10 times... You can put it, swish it through a hoop. Yes, sir. If you, uh, if you want to see him do this, WGN King John on Facebook, or what website do you post your videos on? Oh, I post on both TikTok and YouTube. I've got a, a fair number of follow followers. I've got about 900,000 views so far. <laughs> of my, course you do. On my YouTubes. <laughs> okay, that's Dr. Ken Candido, C-A-N-D-I-D-O, and I'm WGN King John on Facebook. We posted the video there. Why, what's the value? Uh, a, awesome. B, you, are you turning this into some sort of awareness campaign? Well, sure. The Global Health Initiative is first and foremost on my plate. I'm trying to raise awareness for that. Also, as a pain management physician, we've had the distinction of b being the only people in the country, the first people in the country to place spinal cord stimulators for HIV-affected uh, patients who had severe neuropathy. 
And we published our data uh, research in a peer-reviewed journal on that. And I'm trying to raise awareness for HIV for cancer. I, I manage uh, chronic uh, cancer pain-related conditions. These are the things that I'm passionate about, just as passionate as I am about throwing a football. And also about how age is not necessarily much more than a number if you do all the right things, diet, exercise, and so forth. And I've been a fanatic, as you have been, and I know your bio too. We've both been kindred spirits in that regard about trying to maintain our health uh, as we mature, as I, I say. I suppose, but uh, I ain't doing what you're doing. Uh, the Global Health Initiative is what? So that's, that's for underprivileged individuals who don't have the capacity to self-fund. Uh, they don't have the appropriate insurance uh, to, to, have, to seek high-quality health care. And I've been trying to raise awareness for it. I'm hoping to have some sponsorship to raise further awareness in that regard. And anybody in the audience listening who would like to contribute, I will certainly uh, make sure that that, that funds uh, delivered in the name of the Global Health Initiative are sent directly there with nothing at all coming in my direction. So you practice where, at Northwestern? Well, I've been, a, I've been on faculty at Northwestern. I was the, di the director of the acute pain service for many years, and now I'm, I'm the director of pain management services at a place called Thorec Memorial Hospital, 850 West Irving Park Road. I also have private practices throughout the city, and I also do some of the advocate health care uh, 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 programs. I, I just came from Good Sam this morning where I did some surgeries early in the morning. So when are you next going to throw the football? Well, I was, if I wasn't here with you in this lovely audience, I'd, I'd be outside throwing right now, even in the rain. So hopefully if I get out by 2, 2.30, I'll probably throw a couple balls. Michael Piff, one of my colleagues here at the radio station, said, and I see you brought in the, those are authentic NFL footballs. Yes, sir, they are. He's hopeful that you and I can do something in the hallways of WGM, but I don't know that we'll be able to demonstrate your ability or accuracy because we're inside a radio station. Well, the audience should know, respectfully, John, that that ball you threw me a few minutes before we came on live radio it really has stung my hands. I still feel the sting of that perfect a spiral. I snap on that, didn't I? Yes, you did, sir. It's a toss of almost five feet. So we're going to do something in the hallways here. We'll yes, post sir. that. But if you go to WGN King John on Facebook, you can see the video of what you're doing. Uh, do you have family? Are they like, Dad, come inside? Stop it already? Oh, I have family. They say, Dad, come and give me some money so I can go out. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's like my family. Yeah, I've got four children, and um, ranging in age all the way from 40 down to 17. And they, they all have the same common goal. They don't know really what I do professionally. I've written almost 200 scientific papers and 100 book chapters in the peer-reviewed literature. They don't really care about that. They care about... Does dad take care of them enough, as you might remember and imagine? Well, um, what do you do in the name of pain management? Uh, what is the cutting edge in that area? The cutting edge in pain management are higher-end interventional procedures, and that includes things like the placement of a spinal cord stimulator. Uh, this morning I placed what's called an intrathecal, meaning into the spinal canal, a drug delivery system for somebody with chronic cancer pain to manage their pain so they don't have to take oral or through the skin narcotics, and we can use a tiny fraction of narcotics to manage their pain. We're also doing uh, through the skin percutaneous discectomies, and we're doing uh, vertebral augmentation, meaning if you have a cancer and, you, and the cancer has infiltrated your bones and you've had bony collapse, we inject cement, the same kind of cement that an orthopedic surgeon would use, for example, for your hip replacement or knee replacement. Those are the cutting edge things. And pain management is an incredible field ever expanding and but some people don't have the resources to avail themselves of what we offer which is again global health initiative type stuff yeah for the people that don't have the finances that are underserved the global health initiative is one way to pay for these treatments for people yes sir that's correct wow yeah i haven't heard you mention pharmacology is that not your area of interest or that's not where the industry is going well, as everyone in the, that hasn't been asleep for the last 10 years is totally aware of, the opioid epidemic is both global and national, and I've been passionate about that as well. I've given lectures. My lectures are, by the way, on YouTube about my interpretation of the opioid crisis or epidemic. We had 112,000 deaths from opioids last year alone, some of them prescription, some of them, of course, fentanyl and things that come off the street. And yes, I'm very passionate about limiting patients' exposure to those types of compounded medications to the extent that I'm capable of educating and disseminating information worldwide mm. and nationally about that. We have a crisis. The crisis is ongoing, and I don't see any end in sight, frankly, despite tremendous efforts by the, the pain management community, by the, by the FDA, by the DEA, and oversight agencies. It, it still exists. 
It's a conversation for another day for you and me. Yes, for sir. now, let's raise money for the Global Health Initiative Fund. You can watch his videos on TikTok and other places. And we've posted an easy and fun link on my Facebook page. I'm WGN King John there. Well, keep tossing it, Doc. That's really fun. Thanks, John. Appreciate and you. Fascinating. And I'm glad you're doing the work that you're doing. 